I'm Laura Pozzi. I'm a professor here at UZ in the Faculty of Informatics, and I'm also the Bachelor Director. And I would like to explain to you what it means to study informatics and what it means to do so here at UZ. I'm a compu computer scientist myself, and I took this decision to embark in the journey in informatics a few decades ago when I was your age. And that was one of the best decisions of my life, and I hope you enjoy informatics as much as I did, and I do. So the first characteristics that I'm going to tell you about informatics is that it is very versatile. This is great because it means that you will have a lot of jobs to choose from. Informatics is needed in any possible area by now, and there are more jobs offered in informatics than computer scientists that can actually take these jobs. So that's a great news for you who want to study informatics. So here in informatics, you learn so many different skills that you can employ, as I said, in a few areas. We have um, students who have graduated with us, who work at Google, at Sony, at Apple, but we also have students that work in banks, for example, because you, you can use these skills in finance, in bioinformatics. Informatics is also very creative. It's creative in every step that we go through to go from a problem to a solution. So at first we start from a problem and we look for an encoding using the language of um, mathematics in order to then be able to search for a method to solve that well formulated problem. These methods are called algorithms and once we choose an algorithm then we go through the most fun, in my opinion, part of informatics, which is programming. We encode that algorithm that we chose in order to then run it and find our solution. At first, typically, the solution is not correct because the program is not correct. And therefore, we iterate and we may have, ha uh, have made a mistake in the encoding of the problem or in the choice of the algorithm or in the programming itself. And so we creatively iterate until the programming, the program, sorry, is correct and we actually do get the solution. Even finding a problem itself is a creative task because who would have thought a decade ago that we could have searched the internet and uh, write a name here and wrote my own name and find all of the pages that contain that name in fractions of seconds or we can go to the internet again and search for the shortest path between any two cities in the world, or we were able to discover the whole human genome. This is a task that used a lot of knowledge from different areas, and one of those areas was certainly informatics. So what is it to study informatics at UZ? First, I'll show you what it isn't. It isn't this large class where a lot of students try to learn and they're not sure what the professor is saying because there are too many of them. We actually have a small student to professor ratio and this helps learning because you can come and ask us whether if you have a doubt, if you haven't quite understood something or in general if you have a problem or if you want to hear what it is to be a professor, to be a researcher, etc. We also have an atelier open space which is uh, a place where students go and do their uh, projects and put into practice everything that they have learned in the morning lectures. We do believe in project-based learning because it's important in informatics to work together. And very rarely you work on your own in a program, but you work in a team to develop large and large programs. So we teach you this during our courses. I have seen several curricula that give you a lot of theory and no practice or a lot of practice but really not enough theory and I think we have really found the balance between theory and practice in this curriculum. It is very important to build in all of the theoretical parts of informatics. Those are your building blocks onto which then you have to try to practice a lot your programming skills because it takes a lot of practice in order to really get it right. So our teaching style, because we have small classes, 
unable to do assignments or midterm exams and not just wait for final exams, do projects, do a lot of continuous interactions between instructors and students. And so this is nice because you don't have to wait to the very end of the semester to actually know how you're doing. We give you continuous feedback during the semester, semester when we um, correct these assignments or these midterms or these projects so that you see whether you have got it or whether you have to spend some more time studying that and you find this out before the end of the semester. We also don't have a computer lab, but just a portable computer, which is yours. You actually get one as part of your fees and it stays with you at the end of your bachelor. English is our teaching language. English is the language of informatics. There is no other language which is as vital to computer science. So it is very important for a computer scientist to know English well. That's why we teach you in English from the first semester, from day one. So you will listen to English every day, you will speak English yourself every day, and you will also read English because all our textbooks will be in English. And this full immersion is the way that you can actually learn this language perfectly. And you will be very familiar with it by the at most at the end of the first semester. And this will enable you to find a job anywhere in the globe, really. We have designed an innovative curriculum and I will uh, take you through it. So we have three years in the bachelor, therefore six semesters. The bottom, the first one is the bottom one and the last one is the top one. So now let's look at the left, which is the uh, the pillar of programming. So we will teach you all the programming skills that you need to become a computer scientist. At first, uh, the easiest skills, and then we will build on top of it, and you will learn uh, different um, programming languages too. So Java and C, for example, are part of the package that you will learn. Then on the right, we have the software atelier pillar. These are the courses that you do in the afternoon where you get together and you put into practice everything that you have learned in the morning courses. Then we have a theoretical pillar, pillar. As I was saying, it's very important to learn the basics um, of the theory of computer science and also to have strong mathematical skills. So we start with calculus, linear algebra. We also teach you algorithms, automata and formal languages, and the theory of computation. So again, these are the bricks onto which you then build your programming skills. We also have a particular software atelier in the fifth year, fifth semester, sorry, which is uh, called Field Project. We find um, a placement for you in a company and you go there for that semester in the afternoon instead of doing the usual atelier. And again, you put in practice your skills in a company and you get a feel of how it is to work in a company. In the last semester, you also developed a bachelor project. So you choose the courses that you have liked most during your uh, previous semesters and you develop them better in a larger project. Also in the third year, you have some elective courses. So there is some flexibility in the courses that you can choose in the fifth and sixth semester. We also started recently a new course called Programming Challenges course. This is an elective, so you can choose whether you want to take it or not. And this is to prepare students for the ACM Collegial Programming Contest. This is a contest where the best students in Europe go and compete against each other, but in teams, in order to solve programming programs, or sorry, solve programming problems and uh, see how much was learned during their bachelor. We also form a team to compete and we send this team to compete. So Switzerland belongs to the southwestern part of Europe according to the ACM and um, a couple of years ago our team became fifth out of the 75 teams that participated in this contest. So this was a great uh, result for us and for our students. 
what do they do um, teams here? This is a zoom in of the previous image. Teams are given problems and they try to solve them. Some of them are hard, some of them are a bit easier. And then at the end of several hours, um, all of the teams uh, have their final scores and they are ranked. So again, we were fifth out of 75 um, teams in South Europe and this was a great result for us and for our students. So this concludes my presentation and I wanted to thank you very much and also to ask you whether you want to contact me if you have any um, questions that you might want to ask me. Please do send me an email and I would be very happy to give you more details or answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much.